Hello everyone and welcome back to the second flask tutorial. So what we're going to be doing in this video is actually talking about templates and how we can use our own HTML, JavaScript, CSS, all of that with this kind of Python backend. Before I get into that though, I just want to quickly show you something I forgot in the last video, which is how we can redirect to specific functions that take arguments. So you might have noticed that, you know, if I want to redirect, say, from this admin page to maybe a hello page that maybe says hello admin or something like that when they type slash admin. Well, how can I do that? Because if I just put in, you know, user like this, well, this isn't going to give me a proper you know, path to this user function. It's not going to give me an argument for name and it's not going to know what to print name for and therefore we're going to get an error. So how can I actually pass through a value for name when I'm redirecting to a specific URL, which is what you're going to actually want to do a lot of times. So to do that, it's pretty actually, it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to type the name of the parameter and then equals and then whatever you want to pass through. So in this case, I'll just type admin like that with an exclamation point. And this means now what's going to actually happen is when I go to the slash admin page, it's going to return the URL for user and it's going to pass through the argument admin, which means it will print, you know, hello, admin exclamation point, exclamation point. So to prove to you that I'm not making this up, I will run this. Let's open up our command prompt or right, here we go. And if I actually go to not test, I go to admin, then we get hello, admin exclamation point, exclamation point. And you can see in the console here, you know, we went to admin and then we were redirected to that actual page where we had, you know, admin exclamation point, And that showed that for us. Okay, so that's all for that. I just want to show you guys quickly that you know you can do that. And also another point here, just if you are wondering if you could put another slash after the URL like this, what this actually allows you to do is access the page by having, so let's actually change this now, uh, by having a slash afterwards or by having no slash. So right now, if I put another slash, um, you can see we're actually running in, into an error here, like nothing's loading up because there's no root for admin slash. But once I add this slash here, this will actually allow me to access the page with either a slash after or no slash. Just, you know, an interesting thing in case you guys wanted to know that in case you're wondering why your thing is not working. Okay, so let me just close this for now uh, like that. And now let's actually start doing some templates. So what I'm going to do is actually just remove some of this for now. And you know what, we'll just leave the home page because this is going to be pretty straightforward. And I'm going to import something called render underscore template. Now what this function is going to allow us to do is actually grab a HTML file and render that as our web page. So right now we've just been rendering inline, uh, you know, HTML where I just write H1. Someone noticed that I forgot the slash H1 on the tag. There you go. I added it for you guys. Um, but anyways, how do we do that? So what we need to do is start by actually creating an HTML file and we need to put that in a specific directory. So here I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer and you can see this is where I have my two Python files for this specific tutorial for this Flask website. So what I'm going to do is just create a new folder and I'm going to call it templates. Now it's very important that you name your folder templates and that it's sitting beside or in the same directory as your Python script that's running the website. So whatever that Python script is that you're writing that has Flask in it, that's what you need. So I'm going to make a folder called templates and just hit enter there. And now I'm going to create a new HTML file. I can call it whatever I want and I'm going to put it inside of that folder. So to do that from subline, at least here, I'm just going to save a new file. I'm going to go inside templates and I'm just going to call mine index.html, which usually stands for, you know, the first HTML file we're going to use the home page, whatever it is, but you can call this whatever you want but make sure you have .html. So I add .html now, and now I'm just gonna create a very basic HTML file. I'll go through this kind of quickly. I'm not really gonna explain what, you know, how HTML works, cause it's a fairly basic language. And then we will actually just render that template and then see what this looks like. So for the head, I'll just add, you know, a basic title tag here that just says homepage like this. And then for my body, so let's add body tags like this. What I'll do is just add a paragraph tag that just says, you know, hello. And then we'll add a H1 tag here that just says homepage or something like that. Okay, wonderful. So this is my basic HTML file. You know, I could add this doc type HTML because some people like to do that. I honestly don't know if this makes a difference or not when I do this, but you know, we'll add doc type HTML. Okay, so now we have our index.html file. So how can we actually render this HTML file that I've just created and show that? Well, to do that is very easy. All we're going to do is return from this home function render. Oops, if I could spell render correctly. And then here we're just going to put the name of that HTML file. So in this case, it's going to be home.html or index.html, whatever I called it. So let's do that. 
And now if I run this, we can actually load that file. So let me show you. Let's rerun this here. Give this a second. Go back. Instead of going to slash admin, we're just going to go to slash for the home page. And you can see that now we actually get that HTML that we've created and we have home page hello showing up on the screen. Wonderful. Awesome. That's how you render HTML templates. But now I'm going to show you a lot more cool things that we can do with this that actually make it pretty useful. So first of all, what if I want to show, you know, dynamic information on the screen? So like I had before, if I add, for example, and say a name tag here to the home page, let's do that. And I want to display the user's name on the home page. How do I go about doing that? Well, what I can actually do is pass information from here, the back end of Flask to the front end in my HTML template. Now, the way that I do that is inside my HTML template, I can use a few different kind of expressions or statements that just work with Flask. Now, the first one is by doing two sets of curly braces like this. Now, whenever I do this, what this is actually going to allow me to do is type any variable or any information that's going to be passed into this template. So, for example, I could type something like content. Now, I know this kind of seems like random, like what is this? It doesn't make sense. I'm going to show you guys in a second. But when I define content inside this HTML template like this, what I can actually do to pass a value that will replace content is go in here to my render HTML function and type content equals. And then in this case, whatever I want to show up. So here, maybe I want it to be the name that the user typed in here. So what's essentially happening is we're going to render this index.html file and we're going to pass it, uh, pass the variable content, the you know value of name. So what's going to happen is this content will be replaced with whatever name that we had passed in there. And then it's actually going to show us the name. So let me show you this to, you know, prove that I'm not making this up. So let's run this and let's go now, you know, slash home. Hmm. What was the issue here? All right. So I realized that I didn't save that file. So I'm just going to rerun this and show this to you guys one more time because this should actually be working. So you can see I have slash test up here. And when I do that, we get home page and then it shows test. Now, you know, if I do something like test one, two, three, we get test one, two, three showing up and this works just like it did before and that we get the argument passed through the parameter. But now we're just going to pass it one more time into this HTML template. Now we can also pass multiple values as well. So, you know, if we go P and we'll add another P tag and now instead of content, maybe we'll just do like, you know, actually let's not call it random. I'm just going to call it R because why not? And then what I can do is say R equals, you know, two, something like that. And now if I rerun this, we should get the same thing working. So apparently I keep forgetting to save my files, but anyways, I just reran it and now it's working. You can see we get test one, two, three, and then two. And obviously that's because we just passed in the value, you know, R equals two in here. Now you might be asking the question, well, what if I want to pass, you know, a ton of different values? I don't have variable names. I want to pass a list. I want to do something like that. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how we can do that now. So what's actually really nice about this, and you guys are going to be like, this is pretty cool. If you haven't seen this before in Django is inside these templates, we can actually write Python code and we can do that using what we call the, uh, I think it's like the expression statement or something like that. I don't know what the actual name of it is, but essentially by doing a curly brace, uh, percent sign and then percent sign and then closing curly bracket, we can actually write like somewhat native Python code within our HTML to do specific things. So for example, I can actually write a for loop in here. I could do, you know, for underscore in, in this case, we could say range and maybe, you know, zero 10. And if I do something like this, and then I end my for loop by doing percent percent, and for this is just kind of the basic syntax of it inside here, I could actually put some HTML code and I could do P and I could just say, you know, hello, 10 times if I wanted to do that. So actually, let's just make range 10. We don't need that zero. But this is kind of how this works. Whenever you want to declare an expression, what you can do is use this percent sign and then write some Python code, close it with the percent sign in the curly bracket do whatever you want inside this for loop and then end the for loop by just doing end for. And the same works for if statements. So maybe we change this to actually be variable X and we only want to print, you know, hello or X if it's an even number. Well, to do that, we pr probably know how to do that already. But from this, we can actually just put an if statement and say if X mod two equals equals one. So I guess that's actually going to give it to us only if it's odd. Then what we'll do is just print X like that. And then we can simply end our if the same way that we ended the for loop by just doing end if like so. Now, I don't know where that extra curly bracket came for, but there we go. This is completely valid and we're able to do this and I'll show you this actually working right now. So let's go and actually get rid of content equals name and R equals two because we don't need that anymore. 
Let's rerun this. Let's make sure that I've saved both these files and let's see what we get. So refresh. And now you can see we get XXXXX. And the reason we get XXXX rather than getting, you know, one, two, three, or whatever those numbers are, is because I didn't put this inside of a statement. So what I was doing there was just printing out the value X. But if I want to actually print out the variable X, I can put it inside these double um, curly braces like this. And now this is going to interpret this as a variable rather than actual text and print out the value of X. So let's run this one more time, which is just going to entail rerunning this server. So load this up and now we get one, three, five, seven, nine. And that's really cool. It's really awesome. And this kind of dynamic way of displaying things and being able to write code inside of your HTML file really makes things a lot easier and much more simple. Now I'll show you a few more examples just to make sure that everyone kind of gets the hang of this because there is a few different things that you can do here. So let's say I actually want to pass in, for example, a list to my uh, index and maybe I want to just show all of the elements of that list. Well, to do that is pretty basic. I could do something like, you know, content, we'll call that our variable equals. Maybe we have a list of names uh, or something like that. We'll just say Tim, Joe, Bill, my go-to names. And then here, what I can do now is just get rid of some of the stuff in the for loop, change this to say 4x in, in this case, content, just like we would do in regular Python code. And then inside this expression, I'll just put some p tags so that we get these um, you know, showing up on different lines, I'll just put X. Now what this is going to do is loop through all of the elements in content and simply print that out to the screen for us. So let's show how this works. If we restart and refresh this, and now we get Tim, Joe, and Bill, and those names are showing up in the HTML file for us. So this actually allows you to kind of, you know, avoid having to do some really complicated things to get some functionality like this. And this is really nice and will save you a lot of time. Now I just show you a few more um, different examples to make sure that you guys really understand this. We can do, you know, ifs, elifs, else. It's kind of something where you're just going to experiment with it and you're going to see how this works. But I could say, you know, if X equals equals Tim, then I could do something here. And I could also add, for example, an else statement like this. And then at the very end, after the if and after the else, I'm going to end my if statement by just going end if like that. So this is kind of a way that you would do, you know, an if else. You could also add an elif like you might do in regular Python. So you could just go percent percent elif and then do whatever your condition is here. And this would work fine. And you only end the if statement at the end of the entire block. Hopefully that makes sense. So I will say that in this kind of templating language where you can write this code, you can't do necessarily everything that you can usually do in Python code, but you can do a lot of things. And the majority of the time, what you're going to be doing is just referencing a specific variable, or you're just going to be printing things, you know, using a for loop or looping through something like that. So that is kind of how this templating works. I mean, I guess I could put this back. We'll get rid of these if statements here. And that's really all I have to show you guys in this specific video, how we can actually render HTML templates, how we can mess with them with for loops and if loops, how we can pass in different variables, and then how we can redirect to pages using arguments, you know, that might come in our function like that. So in the future videos, what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys some stuff with forms, post, gets, HTTP, TTP requests. I'm just kind of getting you with the basics here. So you understand, you know, how you can actually build the website. And then we get into some more uh, specific and detailed things later on. So as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this.